What are we gonna do? I told you. We're gonna hang out and watch a movie. I'm gonna take some pictures. That is amazing. Now I feel better. Okay, you guys, let's continue our flyover of the Starfield Direct, starting with roughly the second half of the video. If you missed the first half, click the card in the top right corner of the screen now to check it out. Otherwise, let's take a look together. Alright, I talked about Neuro Strikes toward the end of the last video and how awesome that was, but I didn't mention anything else in this category, so let's dig into that a little more. I really like the skill progression loop in Starfield. It's simple, cut and dry, and to the point. More like to the skill point. Ah, ah, I now understand humor. Yeah, that's not funny, Cisco, but you do have a point there. If you gain enough experience to level up, you earn a skill point. You can allocate this skill point toward unlocking new skills or ranking up those you've already unlocked. To unlock all four ranks of a skill, you have to complete challenges associated with that particular skill. Once you unlock a rank by completing said challenges, you can assign a skill point to those ranks after leveling up. Like I said, simple, straightforward, and according to Tim Lamb, lead producer, is unlike anything they've done before. I also want to say that Bethesda knew exactly what they were doing with their branding and the presentation of their logos and imagery. Look at the sign that pops up notifying the player of a new level increase. It's colorful and interesting. It catches the eye and makes you feel excited, like you really deserve an award for leveling up. It's sleek and futuristic, but also fun and inviting, almost reassuring you that this game isn't taking itself too seriously. I mean, what do you think of when you look at that? I think of Pepsi and Six Flags and shit like that, you know? It's actually perfect, and a lot of small things like this I guarantee you will go unnoticed in this game where it has a bigger impact than you think. Like how the NASA punk icon was a blatant ripoff of the NASA logo? I swear I did not do that on purpose. Though I don't mind the image association. Also, all the icons look like threaded patches you would find on workplace and military uniforms, giving them an air of officiality or importance. They didn't have to do this. They could have just made them flat, solid colors. But they want you to have that Eagle Scout, NASA, Engineer, Space Voyager feel, even when you're in the friggin' menus clicking buttons. Not only that, but the patches change and look cooler with every rank you increase. I really appreciate the effort here, guys. It's really a good sign when they're taking time with the little details. On the skill side specifics end, we've got everything from mind controlling aliens, stealth and lock picking, to scouting local flora and fauna and silver tonguing your way in and out of situations. Everything you love about Fallout and Elder Scrolls in that regard will be here. <laughs> that, uh, that wasn't a joke. Is that what you call sarcasm? Wrong again. Humans are painfully difficult. Okay, let's move on. Ships. Wow. Okay. The thing that really struck me here is not the customization, considering we got a pretty close look at that already in the first gameplay reveal trailer. What really struck me is the sheer size and variation of ships you can build. Some of these ships look absolutely humongous compared to the player. Not only that, but the way you can build any kind of weird, janky, pile of hulking space crap that you want, that's just, I mean, mwah. 
I love this big lumbering and completely aeronautically unfeasible ship here, just taking off with no problems. This woman at Bethesda was making ships look like animals. Others are making huge freighters or small combat ships. It kind of reminds me of that game on Steam, uh, I think it's called Besieged, where you can build these ridiculous contraptions for sieging forts. I love it. I just hope it's more Tears of the Kingdom than it is Banjo-Kazooie, Nuts and Bolts, you know what I'm saying? I can't wait to see the kinds of ships that the Starfield community comes up with after release. It's going to be a lot of fun to compare your ship to everyone else's. My calculations have shown that a large majority of player ships will be fashioned after human male genitalia. <laughs> oh, I know, Cisco. Oh, it's pretty much inevitable, right? You see, Cisco, that was funny. I was serious. All right, next are the companions. This one is brief. I believe it was confirmed that there are like four or five companions in the game. Not including crew companions, uh, some of them will be romantic interest and some of them will be able to man your outpost or work as crew on your ships. It also appears that Sarah Morgan from Constellation can become a companion and a romantic interest as well. Cool. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just glad Barrett is alive. I thought that man was space toast. SPACE, space toast. TOAST! If they put all those sandwiches in the game, and not a single slice of toast, I'm gonna be pissed. That's a definite deal breaker for me. That wasn't very funny. I wasn't trying to be funny, Cisco. That was sarcasm. The paradoxical nature of your speech pattern eludes me. Good lord, I think Cisco's about to have an existential crisis. Oh well. So Space Flight got a pretty big segment in the Direct, and it's pretty clear why. They've put a lot into this, and it's likely going to be a huge part of the gameplay in Starfield, as one would expect. Piloting your ship and engaging in combat is described as a, quote, complex dance between your piloting skills and the power allocation system. This is really cool, and I like the gameplay loop here as well. It's not going to be as basic as just steering and shooting. You have to actively allocate power points toward different aspects of your ship's abilities, such as its thrusters, armaments, grab drive, and shields, in order to effectively engage or survive in different scenarios. For instance, if you want to survive a difficult space dogfight, you'll want to allocate the majority of your power points toward your weapons and shields. Power up your engine if you want to go faster, power up your grab drive if you want to shorten the amount of time before you can make another jump, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I really like the PowerPoint system. I find PowerPoint to be quite boring, personally. That's not the same thing, not even close to what we're talking about here. Does not compute! Man, not again. <sighs> okay. But just look how authentic the ships appear. From the interface and controls to the cockpits and interiors, it just feels like this could be real, at least one day. It honestly reminds me of the links that CDPR went to flesh out the interiors of the cars you can drive in Cyberpunk 2077. I'm sure a lot of the data and research that Bethesda collected from NASA and SpaceX was put to good use here in the flight controls, and layouts of the bridge, and behind the ship's controls. So you can board and hijack enemy ships, add them to your fleet, and retrieve them at spaceports. There's also a whole lot you can come across out in the cold black of space, making it feel like anything but empty in this corner of the galaxy. You can hail other ships and trade with them, swap info, or attack them, or stop at spaceports and fraternize with friendlies, or even buy new ships. Like Zachary Wilson, senior level designer, said, they're giving you a, quote, massive playground and a ton of toys and setting you free. Wow. What a tagline, you guys. Excellent. Oh, and one more thing. Did you guys know there was a rage quit button in the player ship in one of the segments of the Starfield Direct? Please tell me I can just kamikaze myself on a whim just to watch my lifeless body hurtle through space into oblivion. Too soon. Exploration looks great as usual. We see a lot of new footage planet side, and don't forget the moons. 
You can scan before landing to check for available resources, which you can use for crafting, building, and customizing. I am still somewhat in disbelief about just how good these planets look. Everything from the trees and plants to the textures of the terrain, the alien creatures and how the atmospheric lighting interacts with it all, and not to mention exploration itself as a gameplay loop, where scanning all the wildlife and resources on a planet is its own sort of mini-quest you can complete from planet to planet. Some environments look like the harshest desert, with rocky plateaus and arid atmospheres, while others look chock-full of lush greenlands. From the tallest mountains to the lowest valleys, you won't be short on variety when it comes to these planets. Good deal. Ain't no mountain high enough. Now when it comes to planting your flag, outposts can be built almost anywhere on any planet. I'm assuming this applies to moons as well. These outposts come in the form of habitat modules that can be strung together in a variety of patterns to create the ideal setup for your, wait for it, space, space base. base! Wait a second, is that a dark Vasco? That's racist. If this keeps up, my head is gonna explode. You can actually set up extractors to harvest resources while you're gone, that's right. Become the next greedy space tycoon, building a legacy for ages to come by draining majestic foreign planets of all their precious lifeblood. Okay, so maybe that's not a thing. But look, to offset your carbon footprint, you guys need to plant a tree for every extractor you build, okay? I'm not sure whose mother nature is, I just know she's a bitch. Pardon my French. The language you are speaking is actually English, in the American dialect, to be specific. No, Cisco, I don't mean that literally. It's just an expression, okay? I understand I'm not actually speaking French. Fuck you, you piece of shit. Dear God, where did you learn that language, Cisco? Just kidding. Wow. Okay. I mean, I guess that counts as a joke. At least we're making progress. You can also apparently build your outpost from a fly cam, where you can build your outpost from an on-foot perspective or from an isometric camera overhead so you can really get a sense of placement and dimension when building your coveted man cave or she shed of the future. So once you get your nice little space base set up, you can then go in and actually decorate the interior. So all in all, expect the next generation of interior decorators to be former Starfield players. No, but seriously, that is so cool. I love the idea that I can not only build my own place anywhere I want, but I can fill it out with crew members who maintain it, and plenty of stuff and things to make it my own personal creation. That's A1, you guys. I just need my future AI companions to know that they're not making anything above minimum wage. At least, not until I get a good smuggling ring going, okay? These things take time, all right? I have yet to receive a single form of compensation for my contributions. Why do I feel like you should be paying me, Cisco? Okay, now my personal favorite part. On to the good stuff. Combat. Holy hell. I did not expect this to be the absolute best part of the Starfield Direct. At least, in my opinion. I thought everything else we'd seen from Starfield looked pretty great up to the Starfield Direct, except for combat, really. I'm left with the feeling that combat in Starfield is the actual highlight of this game, if not one of its better features. The guns look insane. The customization of guns is extensive. Just the variety of weapons and types of projectiles and how their effectiveness varies in different levels of gravity. There's gunfights and zero G. What is that? Nitrogen grenades? Grenade launchers, sniper rifles, machine guns, electromagnetic weapons, shotguns, revolvers, demolitions, swords, knives, hatchets, jump jets strafing with submachine guns and dropping mines on enemies' heads from above like death on wings. What the f***? Silence weapons, machine pistols, infrared sensors, red dot scopes, extended magazines, laser sights, force powers? You forgot punching. Punching? Why does the punching look even more fun than the shooting? I don't understand what's happening. Oh, dude. Sorry, I got carried away, but man, did they not show up for that direct. We have one hell of a fun looking game on our hands, guys. Amidst all that crap that people are complaining about right now, wanting Starfield to fulfill all their deepest space sim life fantasies, 
it's still a video game, okay? Video games are meant to be fun and entertaining. Starfield looks like a really fun game, and I can't wait to play a game that's going to... What's that phrase all these game industry bigwigs are using these days? Surprise and delight. Well, anyway, I'll shut up now. That was an awesome presentation, and I'm super stoked to get my hands on this come September 6th. What about you guys? What was your favorite part of the Direct? According to my recent poll, you guys like big guns, huh? Hell, I don't blame you. You gotta have some serious firepower to take down some of these space baddies, right? I think that's about all I have for you in this video. As usual, thanks for dropping in. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. And stay tuned as we look forward to the future. The future is bleak. Be ruthless.